good day. Looky here. Broad bean. So we have some germination. Another one there. I think I saw another one over here. Maybe I didn't. I've definitely seen another one. Oh, oh there. You see just there, there's another one. So delighted to say that the ball beans have begun to germinate just as the weather gets really, really cold. Hey ho. But look at the sunlight on the plot at the moment. It is rather glorious and on the brassicas too. I mean if the sun's out why wouldn't it look glorious on the brassicas but um, look at that. I mean that's just fabulous. It really is. And this one that was a cutting that's doing really well. And those down there are doing well. They're sort of not sure whether they're actually seedlings or they've just grown off the root. But yeah, they're doing okay. Oh, and look at that. Look at the sun through that brassica. That's a Portuguese cabbage. And then I'm also loving if we go the other way. Or maybe you can see it here. I'm not sure if you can. The stripe, the pink stroke purple stripe in that leaf. Oh. I mean, these look as though they're not being harvested, but they are. There, can you see that pink in that leaf? Oh, really, really good. But yeah, look at that sun. And in fact, just as I was coming to the plot, I heard a steam train hoot. Must have been going through our local station. I might have a look on the internet later to see if I can see what that was. But what I am going to do now is just take out these potatoes which as you see have succumbed to frost quite poorly and i.e. they've succumbed to frost quite badly and are quite poorly and I'm just going to take them out, see if there is anything underneath and cover up with cardboard and then that's this bed put away completely.
I am really pleased that those broad beans have decided to show themselves. It seems quite apt that they're showing themselves on what is going to be the coldest night of the winter so far. And of course, we can now use that term winter because on the 1st of December, meteorological winter began. So we are now well and truly in winter, maybe only six days into winter, but it's certainly beginning to feel like it. Yet the skies today are a wonderful blue. There's lots of sun, as you've seen, and the clouds are all tinged with that lovely sort of peachy gold colour. So it's it's rather fab. Also, I found on the plot. No, I didn't. I found on the site. Many months ago, this hat and I have been saying for months, if you recollect, that I think it's going to be a really cold winter. And when I saw this hat, I thought, right, I'm going to uh, put it on our WhatsApp group, which I did and said, is it anyone's hat? And then when I've seen people, I've gone over to them that I've, when I've seen people that I think might this hat might be theirs. I've gone over to them and I've said, is this your hat? And the final person that I was waiting to see whether this is their hat was here today. And it turns out that it's not her hat. Therefore. It's my hat. Or at least it's going to be my hat until somebody comes and says, are you wearing my hat? And at least I'll be able to say, well, actually, I put it on WhatsApp. I put it on Facebook. I've asked people. And um, you know what? I think it's going to keep my ears a bit warm during the winter months. Um, it might not be the most attractive thing, but I mean, I'm not the most <laughs> attractive thing anyway. So, you know, an unattractive thing on an unattractive thing. Maybe that's like a double negative and it turns me into a very attractive thing. Who knows? Who knows? One thing that is very attractive is further. Where's the other one? Further beetroot. So this one is a, a, a golden beetroot and these are the Chioggia and um, they're going to be going into a stew for this evening. Uh, that stew actually has already been made and frozen. So I got it out this morning. In fact, today I defroze our second freezer. Yesterday I defroze our first freezer. So our freezers are really nice and clean, which is absolutely great. Next stop, maybe tomorrow, the fridges. But yeah, I had some stew already frozen. So these are going to go into that. I'll cook these first because the stew in the freezer is obviously already cooked. So these are going to be cooked first. And we're also going to have a side of dazzling blue kale with that stew as well. And um, I've picked enough so that if there's leftovers, which I'm sure they will be, they can go into an omelette that we will have tomorrow. But yeah, that's that's great. I've also done a little watering in the polytunnel because it needed some. I also wanted to get that watering in before the really cold days, which are about to hit tomorrow, hit us. So, you know, it was good to do that. And um, I've covered... Oh, it, pulls itself up doesn't it oh um i've covered a couple more beds and i've now fully covered underneath the tarpaulin of this bed just here so i'm pleased that that has been done i think tomorrow or the next day depending upon how cold it is is going to be weeding of the soft fruit bed because there's quite a lot of surface grass in there that has crept onto that bed over the coming over the past months and I want to get most of that out and maybe a bit of um, using uh, what do you call them oh I can't think of them what are they called the choppy things hand 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 doodars bigger than secateurs cheers and also using the shears to cut back some of the other grass because we've still got a few frogs around. So um, I don't want to use a strimmer on that. I just want to 
to because it's quite dense where I want to cut it back. So if I cut it back with shears, um, going in with the shear before I cut it, that movement of going in with the shear, waiting with the shears open a little bit, that will be enough for the frogs to go, oh, we're going to get out the way. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Right, I'm going to leave it there. I am actually feeling quite warm in this hat, I have to say. I have to say. I have not worn a hat for many, many years. I don't even like wearing um, anorak hoods, you know, in the rain. I really don't. But I think it's getting quite cool. And if I'm going to be doing things on the plot, which, of course, I want to continue to do. Last year, I think I got a little bit cold in the head at some points. So this year, I don't want that to happen. Right, I'm going to leave it there. See you again very soon. Bye. Good day. I popped down to bring shredded paper. And that's from my office, which has gone into the bin on the right, the dustbin on the right. The dustbin on the left has got wood chip in it. And both of those get added in handfuls every now and again, or pretty regularly actually, to the compost bins that we've got because they act as browns. Um, so yeah that's that's really good so that's what I've done and this morning I was on the phone to Vivi and having a chat about broad beans and a few other things putting the world to rights and she always covers her broad beans which I don't usually do but we've had so much wind chill in the past few years that I've decided it's sensible to cover but what we have here is we've got three rows. We've got one here, one in the middle and one at the end. There's quite a few of these broad beans that have now germinated. So I can see where the three rows were. I wasn't really bothered about where the rows were before because I wasn't going to cover them. But it's important now because the fleece tunnel that I've got, which is here, is not large enough to cross the width of that whole bed so it's only only going to cover two of the rows of raw beans rather than three so what I'm going to do is put it down the far end so it will cover these two rows because the prevailing wind comes from that direction so by putting the fleece tunnel this side I'm hoping that the wind as it comes in will skip over the tunnel and then over this growing row of broad beans as well. I might, let's see how we do, I might do this as a little scientific experiment, a little highly scientific experiment, and leave the closer row uncovered and just have it a little bit sheltered from the wind by the, the fleece. But let's see we'll leave it like that for a few weeks and see how they do but first of all i need to get this fleece tunnel on so i'll do that and then i'll be back with you that's the fleece tunnel in place so two rows of ball beans are covered up with the fleece tunnel and then there's a single row going down the center here which is not covered up and what I'm hoping is that with the prevailing wind coming from this direction, it will skip over the fleece and then sort of miss the ball beans that are here. So I'm not going to fleece those for the moment. We'll um, see 
how this develops as a highly scientific experiment of some broad beans fleeced and others not. I've just noticed actually we've got one gar garlic there which has been eaten. How bizarre. Yeah, all the others are are fine, but yeah, that one's been eaten. Oh, strange world, strange world. I did notice that I need to do some remedial work here. I do have some tape, which I will put on the inside of that because what you don't want is wind getting in here and then starting to um, create havoc because it could tear this bit even more. I'm not quite sure. I've got a feeling that when I saw that away in the shed, it's been nibbled by something. Not a very tasty meal and not particularly high in fibre, I would have thought either. But yeah, um, so I will sort that out. But that can be for another day. Right, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go for a walk along the canal. See you again soon. Bye. Good day. It has been cold. And you can see that the Cardoon has really been quite frost damaged. Which is... Um, interesting i always find it quite a resilient plant but not um not this year i'm gonna to have to look back to other videos because i think um i always think of it was more resilient i'll look back to a year or so ago see how it was looking then i mean it will come back so and we've had um I think this is ice. And there's ice there. And our little... What's that? Oh, I just thought I saw a toad. I thought that would have been very odd. And our little pond here is frozen as well. Not sure if you can see that. But yeah, that's definitely frozen. In fact, the sun is just going below the tree line at the bottom of the site. So we've lost the sun in the last sort of 10 minutes. I have noticed, if we come over here, there's a hole being dug there. Sorry. And if we go over to... Where did I see another one? Oh, beetroot bed. There's a hole there that has been scrabbled about. And that basically means we've got, yeah, you can see the sun just dipping there. We've got um, some fox action on the plot. I did think, I know I'm going round in circles, but I did think that this artichoke, when I first saw it, I wonder whether this was sort of fox damage from a fox jumping through it. But um, no, it's just, um, it's succumbed like the, the cardoon. Because when we removed, or when the stables were removed, we found a fox den and I've realised that it's Brush's den and he's had to move so he's taken up residence underneath the not quite so decrepit shed and the 1940 shed. I noticed he'd done that the other day. So he's actually living, his den is sort of 
behind where all of those pots and trays and covers are underneath the 1940s shed but it sort of also goes under the not so quite decrepit shed because that's where the entrance is so he's under there in fact he's under there at the moment because I saw him a short while ago so yes we have Fox back on the plot oh. but yeah look at that sun going down I came down to just bring some compost down to put into the compost bin, some peelies to put in the compost bin. It took me about 40 minutes because I bumped into three sets of people. So I now need to get back to my desk. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I will see you again very soon for what I assume will be a final segment of a week at the plot, maybe tomorrow, maybe on Sunday. Anyway, see you then. But look, I'm loving the light on our shed. Look at that. See you soon. Bye. Good day. And what a frosty scene this is. Look at that bamboo. Oh, can you see that? Maybe not. It's, um, well, it's obviously been cold. Cardoon's taken even more of a hit now. The brassicas are doing what brassicas do, which is sort of bending over. Look at them. They'll bounce back. These are our turnips. Those leaves have wilted as well. But I have to say, I have never seen it this frosty. I was just talking to somebody at the gate and I said, you know, I think because it's been quite dry of late, the frost has really picked up because it's a very dry frost. You know, it's not really an icy frost. I mean, it's cold. Don't get me wrong. It's cold. And, uh, but it is picturesque. A, I'm not sure if you can see that um, pigeon. There's a couple of pigeons in that tree. You can see one almost in the top left-hand corner. Yeah. And quiet as well. And quiet. But, yeah, what a... What an unexpected sight. And, and as you can see, we've got freezing fog as well. So, um, yeah, we need to go to home base. Well, we want to go to home base. Um, so we're going to be doing that. My window is iced. Gosh, look, can't even wet my finger there we are. look even it's so cold i can't even the heat from my fingers hardly doing anything look oh anyway oh yeah it is cold i've opened the door of the shed and look there's a little two little presents for me isn't that lovely? I'm just going to sit down and explain to you about these. I knew that there was something in my shed this morning that wasn't there when I left the other day, but I didn't know what. I received an email from the guy that ran the bird box making workshop last week. He's a tenant here. He, he and his wife, they have a um, two full plots. This, that's the time when you could get two full plots. They've been here a long time. And he said that they were so appreciative of, of what I do on the site to keep harmony on the site that um, a reindeer or a Father Christmas had left something in my shed. Um, he went on to say that it had been found, or they, I now know, had been found in the Wicks 
bargain bin at the checkout when he was there uh, yesterday. And yeah, they're clamps. I mean, I'm just so grateful that it, it's because you get those clamps that have got the, you know, you've got to wind them to close this up. But these have got a, um, a handle on them. And as you can see, when you pull the handle, it pulls them closer. So, yeah, I'm I'm just so, so grateful to him. Really, really am. And um, I I'm going to put my hands in my pockets because it's cold. And yeah I, I mean it's just so generous of him and so lovely i mean it really is he he and his wife do so much for the site you know as i've said before we have a good number of people here who they're not on the committee and some of them come to work parties some of them don't but in their own time they do set jobs on the site that they like doing and it all helps keep the site in a decent state of maintenance and repair because there's repairs that need to be done as well and and growth because of course there's quite a lot of pruning of um, roses and larger trees that are in communal areas so I'm grateful to all of the people here who who do help and particularly those people who help in their own way and in their own time and really don't want any um you know heralding for the work that they do though every agm i try and name everyone specifically who i am aware of who has done a particular job on the site that year you know in their own time i thank everyone who's come to work parties of course but then there's other tenants who just get on and do their own thing and trim hedges, prune, you know, mow, mow communal, uh, common areas, that type of thing. And he and his wife are, are one of those and they're just lovely people as well. You know, we are we are lucky here. We have such a mix of different people. And when I hear of of other allotment sites and what goes on at other allotment sites, it just really quite frightens me sometimes. Well, not frightens me, but frustrates me, certainly. So, yeah, I'm so pleased with that little gift. Um, or not so little gift, actually. Very generous gift. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Um, we've got a, um, a plot neighbour who, um, who was down here when I came down, has gone back home and has come back. So I'm going to have a chat with her because um, she and her partner have been away on holiday for, um, I think, where did they go, Thailand or something like that, for quite a long time. Um, I think it was, anyway, I'll find out more. I'll find out more. But there's not really much to do down here today. I might come down later and do a bit of harvesting um, of some brassica leaves for supper, but I might just sit at home in front of the fire. And on that, Yesterday, I did go to our local library because I had put a book on hold to be moved to our local library so that I could go and collect it. And it's all about woodworking in the garden. Uh, I think it's called something like Woodworking Weekend in the Garden, something like that. And there's some things that I would just not do. But just like me, they, I can see a bench, like a seating bench, not a, a, a potting bench, a seating bench. And I really do quite miss that seating bench that we had, the blue one, which just got rotten and was falling apart. So um, I'm now thinking that maybe I could make a bench. But first of all, I need to try and find a workbench. I think we might have one in the communal shed because, of course, if I'm going to be screwing and sawing and banging, then, you know, it's best to make sure that I've got a, a like a Black & Decker workbench, something like that, to to make sure that what I'm doing is is safe and sturdy. So, yeah. So this afternoon I'm going to be sitting in front of a small fire and reading through this woodworking weekend in the garden something like that it's called anyway i'll see you again next week for further episodes and segments of a week at the plot 
and I hope that whatever you do over the coming week, which looks as though it's going to be cold, um, my gosh, it says it's minus seven in the shed at the moment. Um, whatever you do, I hope you are able to keep warm because I know that that's quite challenging for quite a few people at the moment. But I hope you can keep warm and I hope you have a good week. And if you've got any comments, please drop them back down back. Please drop them down below and um, any questions, just pop them there as well. See you next week. Bye.